Hey, what's up guys? I've got an interesting one for you today. Can science help you find the worst value, the most expensive and least value for money road bike on sale today? I'm talking about production road bikes that are currently on sale, not really boutique exclusive one-offs or, you know, very limited runs. I'm talking about regular production runs. If science can help us detect, find from the web the most overvalued bike, then in the future it can probably help us find the best value bike and similarly maybe it can value your your bike too. So let's have a think about this. Well, the simplest thing to do, and this is no great shakes here, everyone will know this, you just go onto your favorite website like Evan Cycles, Competitive Cycles, RNA Cycles, Sigma Sport, or one of my favorites at the moment, Rutland Cycling. Just go into road bikes here and then click reorder by price and you'll quickly find, you know, a few bikes which are above you know in the ridiculous stratospheric zone let's say above ten thousand pounds now that might be worth it to you i'm not saying you shouldn't buy it this is not a video about what you should and shouldn't buy for you you can decide i'm just presenting value for money based on some criteria which i'll get to in a second so yeah if you go around all the sites and compile a database then i can give you a quick listing of the most expensive bikes let's say the bikes that are above ten thousand uk pounds or twelve thousand five hundred uh, us dollars and uh, in quick order from 10 to 1 or 11 to 1. So this would be the quick list. The AX Lightness Vile, SRAM Red, ETAP 2016 version, the Willier 06, 2016 and 2017 version, the Stork Air in Aero Platinum, DI2, the, Tri the Trek Admonda, the Emonda SLR Race Shop Edition, and also the original launch 2014 edition, which was slightly lighter, of course. Then, of course, the Trek uh, Madon, the top of the range, Project One Race Shop Limited. Don't forget Marco Cipollini's entire brand, but at the top of the range, the Cipollini RB1000 Durace Lightweight, not just the regular one, the one with the lightweight wheels. The lightweight wheels are going to bump that up three or 4,000. So the total price of that bike, by the way, 11,500. Then you've got the Canon, the Super Light, the Canyon Ultimate CF Evo 10 SL Evo. Then you've got the somewhat boutique brands at the moment, the Festa, the Festa One Limited EPS Edition at £12,000. And right at the top, that super light, AX Lightness Vial comes in again, but in the original launch version, which was launched at £12,850. Look, I know you kind of know this list already, and yeah, it's kind of, uh, these are the headlines, the most expensive bikes, but you know in cycling, we pay a lot for lightweight bikes, don't we? So what if we reorder that list for price per gram what would be the most expensive bikes in price per gram now to be fair we don't know that then the just that top 10 list of most expensive are the most expensive in price per gram so we need to do a lot more work behind the scenes don't worry fast fitness has done that for you we've done an internet trawl a script if you like to bring us all the weights and all the prices of a lot of bikes in fact if you want to have a quick look here they are so price per gram there's a massive list of bikes and we're just interested in the most expensive right now. So the most expensive bikes on price per gram. Let's go from number 10, shall we? So number 10, that Canyon Ultima, which was in number three in price, is actually 10th in price per gram because it is so light. It's around um, 9,000 pounds, but five kilos. So it's 1.76 pounds per gram. The Willier 06 is 9th, the Stork Air and Error 8th, the Fuji SL flagship 1.1 is 7th, Tread, uh, Trek Emonda is 6th, then the AX Lightness Vial 2016 edition is 5th, the really light Meridia Sculptura 9000 Limited, then the Trek Emonda 2014, then that Canon Ultima, yes, is number 2, and at the top, the launch version of the AX Lightness Vial Evo Ultra, which came out 4.4 kilos. That would be 2.92 pounds per gram, or the same price as really elite, like THM clavicular cranks. That's the same price as those cranks scaled up for the for the bike as a whole. That would be the price of those of that um, of that top of the range bike. And yeah, sure, for those that think the price per gram model is flawed, you can do a price per gram differential. Let's say the difference between a notional very heavy road bike, let's just pick arbitrarily 15 kgs, and the difference between the current weight and the 15 kgs. So what's the price per gram differential? That's what this list would look like here. But let's return to the price per gram model. Even then, I'm not satisfied. Because if you think about it, 
yeah, we're not we're not necessarily overpaying if we're paying a lot for a really light bike because of the price of those materials, the price of the design. So so it would be wrong to say that they are the least value for money. What we need to do is build up a more sophisticated database of the factors that determine bike pricing for regular production production bikes. And it turns out that having done this. About 60% of the variance in price comes from the bike weight. That's, that determines the majority of the pricing structure of bikes on sale today. About 20% comes from the model year, you know, like if it was last year's model or the year before. And about 10% comes from the cutting edge frame design, whether it's aero or titanium. And then about 5% on whether it's disc or non-disc brakes, and then 5% also electronic shifting. Or, we can we can look at this model in a more sophisticated way to prove my point if you like if you have a look at this graph here this graph of alphabetical listing of all the bikes on sale today and uh, if you put them in a weight by price chart so you can see this very very interesting scatter plot of 520 bikes you can see that 61% uh, of the variance in the price is actually due to the weight now, we need to do this plot again for disc brake, non-disc brake. We need to do it for electronic versus non-electronic, aero versus non-aero. We, we need to do it for um, you know, every, every type of bike on the market, if you like, every, every type of bike, not every individual bike. And then once we've done that, we can build a mathematical model of bike pricing. And this is where the science comes in. Build that mathematical model and then work out what's the projected price on the mathematical model. That would be the expected mean price versus the charge price. And you get a plot like this. Now it's a linear, more linear plot. There is a scatter in there. There is some variance. But this new, this new model, the R, the, the correlation between the, new, the predicted price and the actual price is 82%. What that means is there's about 20% variance, which is not due to these factors. Now, there might be obscure specification factors but much more likely is due to the manufacturer setting costs you know high or lower so some are good value and some are bad value and without further ado then we can take this list and we can go back to our bike list and we can say which are the most undervalued which are the most overvalued bikes today so overvalued would mean they're overpriced so here's our list from our mathematical scientific model applying it to all the bikes well 500 on sale today the list of the most expensive overvalued bikes on sale today are as follows. Let's have a little look. Let's have a look at the spreadsheet at value. And let's go up to the top. So we're really concentrating on this group here. So we start with the Doors Galaxy. Obviously, that's a touring bike. It's bound to be heavy, 13.1 kilos, but it's still fairly pricey at a thousand pounds. So According to the model, it's 60% overpriced. You can see all these models, so all these bikes are 59% overpriced or, or more at this end. Then we've got the Trek Damani. That's interesting that that comes in not a particularly light, 8.3 kilo, if the web-based script is correct. Then we've got the Factor 1 2016 version, Shan Stushi. And we've got that Specialized A1 Elite. Now, the Specialized A1 Elite could be seen as a adventure bike, but it's got road handlebars. So I put it into the road list. Some people are putting that down as 1750. So let's see what happens then if we change the model 1750 in the specialized A1 Elite. We can see it goes up to 74% overpriced. Pretty much, you know, the maximum, the top of the list. I'll leave it at 1200 for now. There's a comp version, by the way, which is equally overpriced. And then at the top, then you've got this um, specialized, another specialized, the Sequoia Elite. Let's have a quick look at that bike. Again, that's saying that it's a gravel bike with a disc, disc brake. That's taken into account in the model. And even with that, you see disc brake, non-electronic shifting, non-fancy frame. Um, the predicted price is actually 475, but it's coming in at 1750 on some websites. That's the RRP, so it's 73% overpriced. Okay, let's say you want to take out the touring bikes, you want to take out the gravel bikes, you want to just look at those classic road bikes. Which one then is the number one overpriced bike? Well, according to this database, if you believe in the model, and perhaps you don't, perhaps you are skeptics, but let's just say there's some work gone into this, then the Cannondale Super 6 Evo High Mod Black 2017 road version is the most overpriced bike on sale in the UK right now at 8999 for 7.5 kilos. The 
recommended price 899 but the actual predicted price would be 3000 so 60% over price and just looking up that that bike on uh, pedal on it's 8999 you can see the price there but i've just noticed that on evans cycles there it's coming in at 104999 so if we this model is dynamic by the way so if we put in 10 Four nine nine nine. Then it goes up to seventy two percent overpriced from sixty seven, which would be pretty much up there in terms of radical overpricing, guys. All right, this is not just uh, for entertainment value. This database actually will work out the value of any bike, current or future. And what I'm working on is coding this into a HTML format and putting this online on the Fast Fitness Tips so website. You can put in the weight of your bike together with whether it's disc, electronic shifting, or whether it's aero or titanium, and then it will give you a fair price for how much that price that bike is new. And it will also work out the resale value, you know, one, two, three, four, five years second hand. And you'll be able to price any prospective future purchases. So as long as you know the weight and those few characteristics you'll be able to work out that. And hopefully that will be a little a little valuable freebie from Fast Fitness Tips that we're working on. That will be hopefully useful to quite a few people. All right, guys, as always, have a good ride. Take care. Hey, guys, if this video was useful or there's something valuable in here for you, please do Fast Fitness Tips a favor and share this video with one of your friends or somebody who you think would benefit from it. Thanks a lot, guys. That will help support the channel.